what's up everybody welcome back to beyond the veil wow see there is 87 of you that's more than usual i'm very excited to be sharing with you guys tonight i hope everyone can hear me clearly and see me clearly and hit see and hear old donald trump here as well <laughs> um i'm very excited to dig into the subject tonight um only because it's something that a lot of people need to wake up to um as most of you probably are still in the phase of um, I was also in uh, the transition stage of being all gun ho for Donald Trump. You know, he was great. Gas prices were real good. You could get stuff for real cheap. <laughs> However, um, I have been in the transition phase of discovering things that I'm not so excited about with dealing with with this man here behind me creeping over my shoulders. I don't know if I'm going to be able to deal with that this whole time. I'm just going to have to put something up there. But anyway, um, let me pull up my chat box and make sure we're still good on all ends. I know usually I'll have mess ups where I'll share the wrong screen or be locked in one thing and trying to share the other. So let me just make sure we're all good. Hello, everyone. Hello, Matthew and Gabriella and Life Station Express, Miss Linda. Um, and Jason, it's always good to see you guys up here. And Nicole, I know you guys are ready for some banana sandwiches. There's a lot to unpack tonight. It's going to be crazy. Um, but before I go any further, while there's 102 of you guys up here, if you guys could go on and get a few more in here by hitting that like button and or thumb down button, it doesn't bother me, um, and or the share button and the notification bell and the subscribe button. That's a lot to ask for free. <laughs> so if you guys could just do one of those four things, I will talk to you for about two and a half hours or until you get tired of listening to me and sharing some facts with you guys. So without any further ado, I am going to move forward. Okay. Um, I am, like I said, I am at a point now in my life where um, I realized I was tricked really badly in my life. Um, I'm sure many of the people that are up here right now come from my Facebook page are in that same situation. They're like, wow, first off, I found out this and then this and then this and then the mother load this fell in my lap. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to unlearn things and to un get excited about things, <laughs> if that's even a term. Um, however, there's a lot to be excited about. And I want to share that with you. Before we go into the dark stuff, the scary stuff, the bad stuff, the woo, this guy's fear mongering, whatever they say. Um, before we get into any, any of that stuff, I want to share encouragement with you guys. But And before I do that, we have to make sure we pray. So while I have 106 of you up here, uh, please join me in prayer wherever you are. If you do that sort of thing, if not, just hang tight or whatever. Father, uh, so excited as always. I can't wait to... Share with these people the things, Father, that you bring to the attention of many right now in this day. Um, Father, I know that I am no different than anyone else, but I do, Father, have a passion and, and desire to, to search out you and everything in this life and to see your handprint and everything, Father. And in that, I also recognize your son, um, whom you created everything through. Um, Father, I thank you so much for Christ. I thank you so much for Yeshua. I, th I thank you so much for the sacrifice that he made for me. To, to give me the ability, Father, to approach you knowing that you're hearing me, whether you're excited about the things I'm saying to you or not, Father. I know that you're listening. I know that you're here. So, Father, I, pr I pray that right now, everything that, that takes takes place right now um, in this stream, I pray it all brings you glory. I pray that it only gives you, atten you attention. Um, I pray that all attention is taken away from me and only set on you. And I pray that, Father, um, so many will wake up to things um, that need to be woken up to. And, and also, Father, I pray that um, you're with me as well as, as I speak these things. Father, there's a lot of things that may strike some people in a, in a, in a way that they'll get defensive or, or kind of like ripping a bandaid off. But Father, I pray that you would release the tension and instead give us eyes to see and ears to, to hear and patience to endure to at least the end of this video. Um, let everything we do honor and glorify you. And uh, your son, Yeshua's name, we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Okay, so I think I'm good. I think I heard some, yeah, I heard some vibrating, but it wasn't anybody on this end. So we're good. So 118 of you, it's time to go. All right, so first thing we're going to do as usual is we're going to dive straight into the Word of God. Okay, um, as you know, um, by the title, um, we're going to be talking about um, Abaddon or Apollyon. Okay, whichever one you want to call him, the bringer of destruction. You can call him Lucifer, the light bearer. 
Um, you can, and I'm saying all these were the names throughout history. I want to go in and clear that up. Okay. As far as like an antichrist figure, you got to understand, even Christ said himself, many antichrists will come, rise and fall. It's just, it is what it is. You know why? Because even in the Old Testament, they can make it clear. There is absolutely nothing that can happen today that has not happened before. And what's incredible is, is you get zero story hardly from Genesis 1 to Genesis 6, as far as like what happened in the world. And yet he doesn't have to tell you that. Because if you fast forward to the New Testament, he says, just as it was in the days of Noah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I know Noah. He lived to be a long a, a, a old age. And I know that Methuselah and Enoch, they lived to be pretty old too. Well, Enoch, technically 365, and Methuselah is 900 and some years old. It's crazy. Um, but, you know, it, to know that there's nothing different happening today than it was back then is a pretty big deal. Especially when the Bible shows and fulfills those things in so much of life. Like you see evidence of the flood. You see evidence of the petrification of him coming on the clouds of fire. It's crazy. You see judgment as far as like this sunken city. You see smeared um, smeared cities just were wiped over with sand. We've pointed out all these things on our channel. Um, you see so much of this going on. Like, wow, I remember this page of the Bible when I was talking about this. And here I am standing in the middle of it. I was able to enjoy some of that in my past year um, spent on this journey with Beyond the Veil. Um, I have traveled in every single state in the United States except for North Dakota and South Dakota, but I am coming for you. Um, and I have baptized in almost every single state. It's incredible. The most I've ever baptized was in California. I don't forget how many it was there. And then it was like Pennsylvania. There was a whole family of like nine there. Incredible family. But I met so many and so many people really got a passion and desire to dig into the word of God and find truths and hear things. And it's where it's how I got to where I am today. But while I was traveling the United States, I was able to see kind of the Bible played out here in America. And it kind of kind of got to me. Um, I've pointed out a lot of that in the last past couple of videos. Um, so you guys can go back and check that out if you're wondering about landscape things I've pointed out. But tonight I want to get to this point. OK, if I've proven everything, literally, I've, I've I, me and my wife, you know, we've talked about it a few times and I've talked to my friend George. We've talked a couple of times. Uh, I really think there's very, very few points, if any, as far as prophetic stuff that had to happen before the thousand year reign period. If you're curious to that, I have about 16 hours worth of a seven part series of a thousand year reign decode that brought me to this that I encourage you to go back and listen to after this video. But don't go nowhere and don't be judgy. Just hang on. Um, with that said, if I was able to prove so many things being fulfilled here in America and also in the world in general, including the breaking apart of the land three times, which opens the three portals to the abyss which enoch saw at the end of time which i've pointed out also which is the indian ocean triangle the atlantic ocean triangle and the pacific ocean triangle each one bigger than the next was the different breaking of parts of the land you read about a little about in the bible well here's this everybody asks me now like what about now listen if if from i don't know how to get to, how to say this if we know that from the time that Adam and Eve were in the garden until the flood of Adam was about a thousand some years. OK, we're going to say that. Um, let's say that. Well, if we know that everything happened in that little bit of time, because I'm going to say a thousand years, even two thousand years is a little bit of time. And then it reset and we have proof that all that stuff happened at Christ time of death and up until 66 AD and then 73 AD and then once again at the fall of Rome and 450 AD and then the thousand year dark age period which means the unknown year period you know we know a lot can happen in a thousand five hundred years but my point is this um if you if you truly read Revelation 20 next to Isaiah like multiple chapters in Isaiah from 55 to 66. Okay. If you read any of those in the line with revelation, you know, you start noticing patterns and you also start noticing words like shortened and um, short season, shortened time. And um, those are some things I want to talk about tonight and including a short scroll, a 
small scroll, a half scroll, a little scroll. <laughs> we're going to be talking about that too. Matter of fact, that's where we're going to get into first. So if you have your Bibles tonight, wherever you are, I encourage you guys to open it up to Revelation. If you can't see what's on the screen, open up the Word of God on your phone. You can look at that thing all day. Check it out. We're going to pull it up here on the screen and make it easy for you guys. So without further ado, let me get my screen share up here and going. All right, 159 of you guys that I'm encouraging to hit the like, share, and or subscribe notification bell buttons. <laughs> Let's do this, okay? So, um, here we go. First time we're going to do, dive into the Word, okay? We're going to start tonight in Revelation chapter 9. And before anybody's like, hey, but wait, isn't this part of the seven-year tribulation period? And then I'm going to say, hang on one sec. At least let me get to the end of the video and document all this stuff before you jump to any conclusions like most people do when they watch about five minutes of the video and they start typing along in the bottom. I'm going to encourage you guys to listen. So Revelation chapter nine, we're going to get started. OK, here we go. And the fifth angel sounded and a star and, a, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now. I want to pause there. If you read this next to, I want to open up another Bible app beside this one so I can have two Bibles going at the same time without having to. One sec, guys. I love doing this stuff. You know, people ask me sometimes, they're like, hey, you know, which Bible do you use? Which version do you use? Like, how, how do you do whatever, like, as far as reading? I encourage you guys to read as many versions of the Bible and in many ways as you can just to see which one's been messed with and which one's been tainted and which one's been severely changed. You can only do that by observing all the evidence. So let's read something here. Okay, Revelation 20. And uh, let's start here. <laughs> this is this should this should be like this should be a pretty um, eye opening thing for you guys. The thousand years, Revelation 20. We've been talking about this a lot. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit. Okay. Well, over here, you have this. The fifth angel sounded. I saw a star, with is an angel, fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Let's go back over here again. And I saw an angel, a star, come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now. I want you to know something. This is when Satan is being trapped and locked up for a thousand years. But you need to understand that same angel that came with a key to the bottomless pit that locked up this Satan, this devil, this dragon for a short time until the thousand years are over. And then he had to be released for a short season. You know, this time we got to rust. He's released the same exact way. See? When a thousand years are over, he shall be loosed out of his prison. And this is where Daniel comes in. If I could pull up a, a third Bible app, I'd pull up Daniel as well, where Daniel talks about what? Well, Michael having to stand up and also to release and to let Satan back out of his prison, which he was bound in for a thousand years. Meaning this, here he comes with the key and he's going to loose the chain of Satan and he's going to stand up and release Satan back onto the earth. That's important because that falls in right with this. Let's go to, I think I can actually flip my chapters here now. Yeah, let's go to here. Okay, now here's where this is also. You know, when Satan's, this is awesome. I love this. Okay, now, and the great dragon was cast out. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this. And the and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Well, when is this? This is after the thousand year reign. He's being cast down to the people again. Okay. And it's as above, so below. You got to understand there's different parts of Satan. I pointed this out also, just as there's seven, um, there's the seven candles in front of Christ and there are the seven um, uh, lampstands in front of Christ. Okay. 
there's also seven of Satan's seven, seven deadly sins rising. And this is where you get behind Lucifer, the light bearer of mystery Babylon, her seven pillars rising. And this is where you also get, which we're going to touch on Donald Trump's tower with his seven pillars rising. That's the seven deadly sins of Satan. Okay. And with that, one of those is wrath. You got to understand that anger, wrath, and that form is Leviathan. That is the, the darkness that was over the face of the deep, that great serpent of old. That's Leviathan. That's wrath. That's Satan's form of wrath. Why? Because God also has a form of his wrath. That's seen through his son, Christ, who comes on the clouds of fire. Okay. Two different things going on there. Um, so here's where this comes in. After the 1000 year reign, you got to realize Satan is set loose. He was chained and he's unchained. Okay. By the only one able to do so. And that's Michael. So here's this. After the mud flood, which we're going to read about here. There was a buildup before that. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast onto the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, remember, for those of you that are like, oh, this was before creation. No, remember, earth was not created until he pulled up dry dirt. Ground is earth out of the sea. Remember, it was only water. The only time you read about earth, it's not a planet. You never read the, the earth is a planet in the Bible. The only time earth is mentioned is when it's talking about the dirt that is pulled up and dried land that's separated from the water is called earth. OK, so and his angels were cast out with them. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. And now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the brother of Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Now, this is like I said. I've been trying to tell people over and over again, there's new Jerusalem in the third heaven. And when you die, okay, this is like the, the resurrection of the two witnesses, for example. Okay. They get killed and humiliated. Their bodies humiliated, one cut off, and then the other one hung upside down on a cross and then humiliated in the city of Rome, literally for three days. And then remember God spoke life back into their bones and they stood up. Okay. And then what? He calls them up into the heavens. OK, first death. We all must go through first death. You got to understand that is second death that has no sting. OK, when we used to die before Christ died on the cross and, and took Abraham's bosom up with him, leaving only Hades and death, because that's not done away with until the end, that great white throne judgment. OK, it's important to know that. Um, so he, here we go. OK, I don't want to get off track. I want to stay on. I want to stay on this part right here. So, like I said, you got Satan being cast back out onto the earth. Okay. People here. That's this time when there's earth. Okay. And then there's this. The dragon saw that he was cast out onto the earth and he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. That's Christ who she brought forth to. <laughs> Remember the whole thing with Christ? He died on the cross for you guys. Remember that he's the child that came and died. And to the to the woman were two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place that she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Now, this is where America comes from. Satan's released, but the woman's gone off into the wilderness for a place where she'll be nourished for time, times and half a time. <laughs> and the face of and the face of the serpent. From the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after this woman. That's the mud flood that took place that wiped out the millennial kingdom and everything else that he might cause he, her to be carried away in the flood. But guess what? Water mixed with earth causes mud and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Recap. Satan was bound for a thousand years. During the thousand years, Isaiah makes it clear that there was still death in the world. He says that the old man will live out his days. And he says if anyone would die at an age less than 100, he would be just considered a sinner or cursed. And then there's this, that meaning there's still sin there and all that. And if there's people dying, there's still death in the world, too, meaning there's still Hades for bad people also. But we sleep in the dirt. Remember, that's what happens. And at the end, we wake up. We catch up to them. That's the whole thing at the end. That you read about at Great White Throne Judgment. We're those, we're that batch. Okay. So here we go with this. We got this mud flood going on, and here's here it comes. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Meaning this, 
even though the woman was taken away, the dragon still went to make war, as in the war of Gog and Magog that it talks about in Revelation 20. World War I, World War II, and soon to be World War III, the final war, when, when all the nations of the four corners, that's what it talks about, the four corners, which are Gog and Magog split in half, meaning this nation against this nation as far as continents. Okay, I pointed that out as well. That's why it's been all these wars and rumors of wars and finally World War One, finally a World War Two, and soon to be a World War Three coming. That's this part right here that we're at. We're the remnant of her seed that are left behind. We are indeed these people right here. And you guys should be excited about it. We've got a title in the Bible. You know what we are? We are indeed. We are the saints. We're the camp of the saints. And we are a scattered saints. Okay. And because here's where here's where we are, okay. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. That means all four of them, they're in there in all, okay. Deceive the nations for which are in, they're in four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together in battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up on the bread of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints. Which are what? Well, that's that seed we were just talking about that was left behind. Okay, that's given birth. We were born for this right here, me and you and everybody watching this. And fire came down. You know what fire is in the Bible every time? That's wrath. And we now know that wrath has a name. We know that Satan's wrath is Leviathan. We know that God's wrath is Christ. And every time he comes on judgment, whether it's Sodom and Gomorrah getting petrified, whether it's anything of that sort, whether it's him coming on a cloud of fire during the time of Rome's destruction and Jerusalem's destruction and everything that happened then with his soldiers, his armies, and his clouds of fire, okay? That fire, that wrath is God's all-consuming wrath, his fire, okay? Here we go. And the devil, and that, this is what we have to look forward to, okay? Being Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, the difference is, is he's telling you guys have faith. In the end, he'll increase the knowledge, he'll increase the wisdom. Men, women, and children will prophesy and dream dreams. That's the end. Well, the end is here. When the See, the end is here. It's not up here during the thousand-year reign. Okay? There's still, Isaiah makes it clear, during the thousand-year reign, that's not the end. Over here at Great White Throne Judgment, here's where the sun and the moon run away from the Lord. Everything does. And everything gives up is dead. Here is where death and Hades are cast into the lake of fire. Here is where Satan is cast into the lake of fire forever. See? And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. That's at the very end, after the thousand-year reign. After the thousand-year reign. Okay? And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled from, fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books which were written in the books according to their works in these days. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which, which, which were in them. I need to calm down a little bit. And they were judged every man according to their works. There it goes again. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. There's where there would be no more death ever again. This is the second death that has no sting. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Make sure your name's in that book, okay? So now that we've established that, let's move forward. Slash backwards. <laughs> I want to show you guys something crazy. And for those of you that have been following along also, you know that one of the things that I pointed out, let me make sure we're still good. <clears throat> um, one of the things that I have pointed out in my previous lives of the Thousand Year Reign is I straight up documented the four legions that crossed the dried up Euphrates River, literally, and invaded and killed millions of the Jews that were in Jerusalem at that time. The four legions that were bound at the Euphrates River and released as documented during 66 and 73, seven year period. All that took place. Um, 
Like I say, if you want to question that, I would encourage you to go back and look at all the evidence I provided for that. However, now we have what they've created overseas as this big old distraction. And, you know, um, everything seems to be fulfilling again, but in shorter increments. And this is where it gets really awesome because I have to have a way to prove to you guys that once again, we are in a short version of everything from before. This should blow your minds because I was never taught this before. And I wish I was. I wish I was because it makes perfect sense. You ready? Here it comes. Revelation chapter ooh, nine. Let's start. You ready? Ooh. Like I say, I pointed this out. This right here is important. Okay. And a fifth angel sounded and I saw a star, an angel fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. What was in the bottomless pit did we talk about? Everything that, that involved Satan, as far as Satan. Okay, and we also know that Leviathan is Apep in, in e e Egyptology as well. We've got Apep the serpent, who is Leviathan the serpent. And you've got Queen Elizabeth, who's straight up documented to talk, talking to this dragon serpent in the sea which you can read about, which is a whole rabbit hole I've been on lately, which is crazy. <laughs> but here's this. We know that things were in the bottomless pit. Do you know what else is in the bottomless? Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Sorry about that. I got my alert. Hold on one sec, guys. All right. So let me take this. Bam. I'm back. So here we go. I didn't, I didn't even go anywhere. So the bottomless pit. Okay. We know that stuff is in there. The abyss is where Satan was prisoned, okay? But we also know that there were a third, a tenth of angels that were kept in certain places and imprisoned in certain places. We know that the word Tartarus comes from the imprisonment of the fallen angels, which is beneath the face of the earth. That's where the word Tartaria come from, because Tartaria comes from Tartarus, the prison of fallen angels, because that's what it, indeed they did. It imprisoned Satan. Okay, and his forms and up merged Tartaria, the millennial kingdom where there was a peace on earth, but there was also still sin and still death going on. And there was an end to it where Satan had to be cast back and there was a mud flood and there was a reset and everybody loses their minds. So here we go. Let's move a little further. All right, here we go. All right. And the fifth angel sounded. The star fell, bottomless pit opened, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as to the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men that have not the seal of God on their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, as their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall... Men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire it to die and death shall flee from them. It's important to have that mark on their forehead that God's got you sealed on. And I want you to understand, everybody's looking for a mark of Satan. Well, you can't see marks. If Look, for those of you that are like, oh, good thing I have that seal of, of God on my forehead. And then you're like, but I'm going to look for a physical mark on, on somebody else's forehead of the mark of Satan. I want you to, I really want to make this point clear, okay? You can't be like, I've got the mark of God on my forehead. You just can't see it. And then be like, but you got to you gotta make sure you see a mark of, of Satan in Rome, mark of the beast system on someone else's forehead. I encourage you guys to go look at my previous video about what the Pope is pushing about his mark and the mark of Rome and what he's making. And I also encourage you to look at the Sabbath in the Bible and how God gives that as a mark, a sign of his people. Many times in the Bible is an everlasting permanent covenant of his mark on the seventh day. That's a whole other thing you guys need to go back and watch. So here's this. You ready? And the shape of the locusts were like horses prepared into battle and on their heads was as it were like um, 
were like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of wings was as the sound of chariots as many horses running into battle. I want you to remember that. And they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Now, do you know what's interesting here? I'm going to pause. I've been doing this thing with a lot of you guys. For a long time where well on my facebook page where i'm like hey what time is it right now and i'll be like okay it's 7 35 it's 7 35 where i'm at right now eastern standard eastern standard time so what i'm going to do right now live is do this i'm going to look up 7 35 scripture okay and this i speak for your own profit not that i may cast a snare upon you but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. And I encourage you guys to listen to that. I'm not telling you these things to, to make you feel like you're any less smart than I am when I'm the same as you guys on the same boat, on the same earth as you guys. Okay. It's strange how this scripture falls right in this. I bet some of you guys were like, oh, I'm going to type something mean down here and call this guy out, guy out for a lie. I'm going to encourage you guys just to wait to the end and see if any of this can be for your own profit here at 735 while I pull up a 735 scripture. My point is this. God has a way of speaking to you using the Bible. Matter of fact, you can do it anytime you want to. For example, we've been wanting this video 36 minutes and 56 seconds right now. 3656. Watch this. I don't even know if there's a book with there. Yes, there is. 3656 scripture. Let's see what this does. Mm -hmm. This is going to be Matthew 36, 56. Well, let's just see what the first one to pull up is. That's what I like to do anyway. Ah, oh, okay. So once again, this is a good point in the Bible. I can probably pull up all kinds of stuff. But it encourages you to read in the Bible and to look at things. And like I said, I can probably pick this one apart too. But what I want you to look at is this. Revelation 9, 11. Pause. First of all, we know the book of Revelation. If, you, if you, Matter of fact, you can say two things to somebody who don't believe in the Bible and they'll probably, you know, have some sort of knowledge that this book is good, this book is bad. For example, if you're like, hey, have you ever heard of any book in the Bible? And they're like, oh, we hear these Bible-believing Christians talking about Revelation this and it's coming true this and that. They think about Revelation as this book of doom. And they make they think of Genesis as this book of creation where it talks about all this stuff, but they don't know any of the in between. OK, well, <clears throat> my thing is this. Everybody knows Revelation is important, but everybody also knows this. If I was to bring up the words 9, 11, 9, 11, many people in here in the United States would automatically go straight to September 11th, 2001, like immediately. And if you've been following my page. I've been talking a lot about whether 9-11 is the birth or the death of Christ. And I'm going to say that because I can never put any firm stamp on anything. So 9-11 being the true death or birth of Christ, which we've talked about both of those sides here. Okay. But there's also this. 9-11 um, is seen through. I don't know how to say it. If you've been doing a lot of decoding with me or a few other channels, you know you see it everywhere, that 9-11, okay? Well, 9-11 talks about this. It says, word for word, 9-11, one of the most important books of the Bible, and one of the most important numbers, 9-11 says this, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek tongue has the name Apollyon. Pause. Okay. In order for me to tie anything into what we have to today, have to talk about tonight, I want you guys to remember that passage there before I go on a little further. Okay. 
this passage here is what we're going to be looking into more than anything tonight is this Abaddon and Apollyon and in today's world what it means. Okay. But pump your brakes because once again, I have to get through this part before we get on the Apollyon Abaddon subject. Okay. But keep this in your mind. A bad Don. Keep this word in your ma- in your mind, okay? In Hebrew, it means that as well, okay? And Apollyon, as we move forward. So, we have that, that going on there, and then we have this. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice, voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Okay, we talked about all that stuff as far as documentation in 66 through 73. But we got to remember this again. Okay, I have to find another Euphrates River down today that's going to drop again. And I'm going to get to why. Okay, and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and jacinth, and brimstone, and their heads of horses were as um, heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire. And by the smoke and by the brimstone, which was out of their mouth for their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails were like the serpents and their heads. And with them, they do hurt. And the rest of men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works. I want to encourage you guys, if any point in today's day and age, if to any at any point in today's day and age, that's a weird thing to say. Um. You have something like this going on around you. I encourage you to repent. Matter of fact, in today's age, I encourage you to repent regardless. The whole Bible is about repentance. And yet a lot of people like to only think about the death of Christ only and forget that even Christ is calling everyone to repentance. Go and sin no more. Can we do it perfect? Absolutely not. But if we love him, we will keep his commandments. And if we love him, we'll produce fruit because he says he who's not producing fruit will be cut off from the vine and tossed into the fire. So here we go. Watch this. Okay, let me finish this. Repenting not of their works in their hands, and they should not worship devils and idols and of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they or their murderers, or of their sorceries, nor of their fornications. If you're into sorcery or murdering or any of this stuff, repent. Or fornication, sexual morality, adultery, pornography. Stop that stuff, guys. Nor of their thefts. Repent of these things. Now, here we go to the next part. Watch this. This is where it gets crazy. Do you know what's next right after this is this little book? Okay? That you never hear about as far as... (laughs) Watch this, okay? And I saw another mighty angel come down. Remember this little thing. And remember the shortened season. And remember in his word, he also says, if I didn't shorten the time in those days for the elect, there would be none left. Shortened time, shortened season, little book, little season. Watch what, watch what happens here. This is interesting. Right after this. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and his head, and and he had in his hand a little book, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when the lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices i was about to write and i heard a voice from heaven saying unto me still up now now realize he never got to write this <laughs> what was he about to write what was he about to write about this short this short little book that he was giving him 
Seal up those things which are the seven thunders uttered. Seven of them. There's seven thunders here. He told them seven things were going to happen. And he said, don't, don't tell anybody. Don't write it. Seal it up. Write them not. This is going to get very interesting. And the angel was angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there sh there should be time no longer. Hmm. So he, he can't do anything with this until there's no other time and we know at the end of time that's when everything rolls up in the great white throne in new jerusalem come down in the we read about that revelation 20 earlier right before great white throne at the end of satan's short season that does not happen before the 1000 year reign okay so here we go but in those days this is crazy of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of god shall be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets here we go and the voice which i heard from heaven spake unto me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and open and and upon the earth and i went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book about the little season about the shortened time about the short season with satan <laughs> and that we never got to hear about here's what he said to do with it give me a little book and he said unto me Take it and eat it, and it shall it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, this is incredible, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, you ready? Everybody say it with me. <laughs> thou must prophesy again. Before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Let me go back here. So what I'm trying to say is <laughs> that little book, that little shortened season, that little seven thunders, that little seven bowls of wrath, the final, the shortened, that's for us. Okay, I want I want to say that again. You don't read about it in, in that. He was about to write down the seven things. The seven thunders said that he was going to pour out in those days. Okay. And once again, we know there's nothing new under the sun. Okay, I want to repeat that. There's nothing new under the sun. Meaning it's all happened before. But we have seven thunders of things that have to happen. That are have to happen at the end when the time is ending. And it has to be a shortened book, a short book for us that's given. Okay, that you don't hear about until later because he has to prophesy again. So I hope everybody understands where this is going. I don't even see anybody in the chat talking about this. Y'all are talking about a few other things, but I think this is pretty pretty awesome. Okay. Um, once again, <laughs> here we go. Now that I've talked about that, saying that once again, seven bowls, seven more thunders, seven things have to happen in a shortened form given to this time after. Okay. That's us. Okay. This right here, us are going to go through these things. Thank you. I love seeing that. Or somebody said it. Um, thank you for that, Miss Gracie. <laughs> it blew my mind too. <laughs> so here we go again. Now that we know there's a shortened season, a shortened book that he had to eat for a later time, now that we know that's for us, now let's get into this crazy thing. <laughs> this is awesome. Now let's, now let's move forward with the reason why you all came, which is Donald Trump, really. A lot of guys, a lot of you guys are still hung around his finger like a wedding band, but whew, I'm hoping you're going to file for a divorce tonight. So here we go. Let's move forward. Now that we know that there's a shortened version of all these bowls poured out in seven thunders again, <laughs> we know that this is one of those things that has to happen. And guess what? Incredibly enough, I've proven my Euphrates River that celebrated se separated California from the rest of the United States, which was Egypt and all that. Now we have a copycat overseas of everything. And guess what's happening there? Well, over there, they're also having a Euphrates River that's drying up. And they're finding things at the bottom. 
and all of this stuff. Now we know it's not completely dried up yet, but they're finding things. Some of this stuff is fake, but the hollowed out caves, a lot of this stuff is not fake, but they have found all kinds of stuff down there. Everybody's kind of freaking out because they're hearing things and all that stuff too. Well, if there's nothing new under the sun, and we know that things had to happen then and have to happen now. And we know that Satan tried to deceive everybody, but God takes what the enemy means for evil and turns it for good. If we know that he set up a replica since Israel is only 75 years old <laughs> because they massacred the Palestinians, 800,000 of them, the Zionists did and implanted Israel of Rothschild over there for these end times, shortened seasons, which is ultimately God's will being poured out as well. We have this. So now we have a Euphrates River drying up again. OK, we also have something that a lot of people missed to me that a lot of people missed. It's not for me, though, because this was right after the death of my son. I don't know how you guys didn't hear about in September, not September, in December of 2019, all the locusts that literally covered the sun in Africa and parts of Europe moving up and literally consumed so much of the crops as well. I hadn't seen anything like it since Egyptian times, supposedly. OK. A lot of people miss that because COVID started then to distract and turn your eyes from all that stuff. They started the serpent seed and introduction through the smack scenes that I can't talk about up here live. However, you guys completely missed all the locusts that were set loose in 2019 out on the Gog side of everything. And you've also forgotten this. You know what else has been happening on the Gog side of this? In Gog, you've been hearing trumpets and all these disasters and things going on over there. But here's what I think is about to happen. All of that's about to twist and start happening over here, too. Everything that you see that started happening over there, I believe is about to start happening over here on a real bad scale. OK, so here's where I'm going to get going with that. Here's something very interesting you guys got to look at with my first point. We got to look into Abaddon. OK, like I said, Revelation 9, 11 and all these versions will just read say this. They had a king over them, the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon. That is the destroyer. OK. <laughs> My thing is, everybody in today's world is looking just for like just for this description of the Antichrist that happened in 66. But there's so much more. <laughs> this one here. <laughs> this is the big kahuna. This is this is the abyss in a form itself. You guys ever seen Hercules? You ever notice Hades is a personified person as well? And that Le wrath is Leviathan slash Apep guard in the underworld as he comes down there like it's a, 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 a actual form of a actual layer as well. Just as the Bible says, as above, so below. And as there's things going down in the underworld, there are things going on on the face of the earth matching the things in the underworld. And in the spiritual world, the battles that are going on are battles that are happening for me and you. And in the heavens and the luminaries as well, they're all happening in accordance to God's will and his work and his plan and his purpose. OK, so like I said, this is the big kahuna here, <laughs> this Abaddon, Apollyon, destroyer. OK. In Star Wars, he's the destroyer of worlds and his death star in the sky that eclipses the sun and harnesses the power of the sun and torches planets. <laughs> um, you can see it kind of through a lot of those spacey things, even Star Trek. OK, but let's look into Abaddon a little bit just to get you guys a little fresh on him. Man, I didn't even share my screen yet, but here we go. Boom. Here we go. I'm excited. Okay. Yes, this is Wikipedia for those that are going to be like, da, 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 da. well, check this out. You know that Wikipedia, I say this in all my videos, is nothing more than a reference page for book notes that are putting at the bottom. The footnotes in books, this is where they are all gathered together into one place. So you can take these and go and look back at the books and the dates and the years that they come from and stuff like that yourself. Okay. This isn't somebody just you know, saying stuff always just today. A lot of this stuff also comes from old ancient Greek and all this old stuff, old books that you can pull up references. OK, so here we go. Let's look at Abaddon a little bit here. In Hebrew, Abaddon means doom, destruction. And in Greek, the equivalent Apollyon, which also means destroyer. 
Bible in, uh, appear in the Bible as both a place of destruction. This is what I was telling you, and an angel of the abyss. In the Hebrew Bible, Abaddon is used with reference to a bottomless pit, often appearing alongside the place Sheol, meaning the resting place of dead people. In the book Revelation of the New Testament, an angel called Abaddon is described as the king of an army of locusts. His name is first transcribed in um, Greek, Revelation 9 11, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and then translated Apollyon. The Vulgate and the, um, that Bible and additional notes not present in Greek text in Latin, exter, whatever, being the Latin for destroyer. So we get it. His, his name means destroyer, bad things, boom, destruction. Okay, and it also means a place of the abyss. Okay, got it. So let's look down here, though, a little bit further. Okay, let's see when it was mentioned in the Bible that you have. Okay, Job 26, 6. Sheol is naked before him. Abaddon has no cover. Okay, this makes sense. Sheol, we know, is a place of death in Hades, but it also at one point had Abraham's bosom there before Christ. This is where you read about the rich man and Lazarus. Okay. We know that the underworld Sheol had Abraham's bosom and it had Hades down there. Another word for Hades, which I've been trying to tell you guys, is Abaddon, okay, or Apollyon, or Abyss, whichever one you want to call it, okay? Abaddon and death say, this is in Job 28, we have only a report of it. Okay, and that's where I was getting at with death and Hades, Abaddon and death. A fire burning down to Abaddon. Well, that's the underworld. That's what I was telling you, the bad part where people are being tormented by Abaddon, Hades. That's where Hercules gets it. Consuming the roots of all my increase. Psalm 88, 12. Is your faithful care recounted in the grave, your constancy in the place of perdition? Perdition is another word for Abaddon, Apollyon. Okay, Sheol and Abaddon lie exposed to the Lord. How much more the minds of men? Think about that. Proverbs 27, 20. Sheol and Abaddon cannot be satisfied. That's death and Hades. Okay, nor can the eyes of man be satisfied. Okay, so let's see some more here. Okay. This stuff's going to get crazy here in a minute. Y'all just hang in there. All right. I want to look more in today's world. Okay. This is where it's going to get nuts. Finished with this one. I finished with this one. And I finished with that one. All right. So here we go. Next part. Let's see where it is in culture today. Let me make sure I'm still good over here on this end. Good. It's 177 of you guys. All right. Let's go next. Right here. Now, this is crazy, by the way. If you haven't been keeping up with, and I've been trying to tell you guys, with my Wrath slash Leviathan slash Godzilla um, series that's been going on here lately, both on Facebook, especially on Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of, of videos you guys need to catch up on my Leviathan, NASA, rockets, um, abyssal nuking, atomic bombing thing going on right now, okay? Warship stuff going on um i encourage you guys to go watch those videos and catch up because tonight we're going to be talking about a little bit of that as well and it's not might not make sense to you if you haven't been watching those things i talk about a lot of things so let's move forward with this because this is going to tie right into our godzilla decode okay so here we go abaddon a name given to an angel. That's we, we already talked about. That. That's the same thing pretty much from the previous page. But down here is where I want you guys to look at. Look at all these times when the word Abaddon is brought up in today's literature. Okay. In today's <laughs> today's literature. Like they're still talking about Abaddon and still putting Abaddon in books, still putting Abaddon in movies. Even this year, they're putting Abaddon in a movie. <laughs> you ready for this? Yes, Abaddon's one of the name of Godzilla's people. But here we go. Let's look into this a little bit. I'm just going to look, look at a, a few key ones that a lot of you guys would know. For example, Harry, Harry Potter. This is pretty mind-blowing stuff here. The name Azkaban, the name, the main wizarding prison in Harry Potter world, is a mixture of 
the name Alcatraz, which is, was that overseas? Is Alcatraz overseas? No, it's in San Francisco, California, where I've been saying where the abyss and where all that stuff is. The promised land outside of that is Hades, where literally Christ took Peter to the gates of hell and said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Alcatraz happens to be right over there in California, not overseas. But look at this funny thing. They, they name Azkaban after the prison place of Alcatraz. But watch this. As a mixture of the name Alcatraz and the island, an island prison in the real world and Abaddon. Would you ever known that, that that word from Harry Potter literally came from the word Abaddon in America, Alcatraz? Well, here we go some more. The fallen angel demon Apollyon is the main antagonist in this. OK, talking about the apocalypse. OK, it's talking about Apollyon and the apocalypse. OK, let's look down here a little further then. Mm -hmm. I had some of these already kind of highlighted. I think I may pull it up that way. All right now, here we go. I found it. Just so it'll be a little easier. This is interesting to me. <laughs> this is very interesting to me. Okay, especially if you go get if you get a chance to go look at all these, I encourage you to. There are some rabbit holes and a half. All these mentions here of Abaddon, but let's let's look at this one real quick. The 2019 film Godzilla, King of the Monsters, <laughs> mentions a Titan dubbed Abaddon. Though it is not seen in the film, but the Titan. Now I want you to understand that that movie talks about a Titan, but it's not seen in that movie, in the 2019 one. It'll save for a later date, but they're bringing it up. But the Titan was discovered while at the hibernation in Outpost 77, Devil's Tower, Wyoming. This is saying that Abaddon, the Great Titan. The final destruction, the destroyer of worlds, the wrath form of him, not the man form of him, not the star version of him. <laughs> the wrath version of him is in hibernation at Outpost 77 at Devil's Tower, Wyoming. Is that where I'm saying he's at? Nope, just wait a second. It's going to blow your minds. A containment field was built around it for further, further studies of the creature before it arises and it escapes. After being woken by King Ghidorah alongside the other 17 Titans. Guess what? 2023, the one coming out now, Abaddon is going to be busting loose along with the other Titans. Pretty interesting. But there's also some other stuff that we need to look at with this whole <laughs> giants and things coming out of trees like a portal from the underworld okay if you guys have been paying attention to my enoch studies i did over on beyond the veil facebook page one of the things i talked about recently as far as like a couple of months ago recently enoch study was that the portals to the underworld as mentioned in enoch were actually volcanoes it was always talking about the lava and the columns of lava when it talks about entering into the abyss but once you get down there there's the different layers he went into but each one, the center of the world even, he went into a, spur, a ver, vortex, a spiral, a pit of molten lava. Okay? Which is crazy because it all feeds the lake of fire and brimstone at the bottom. Okay? Now, here's something I want to show you guys. Let me pull up here. Okay. Let me pull this. One sec. All right, so here's if for those of you that don't know, this is Devil's Tower, okay, here in Wyoming, and yes, it looks exactly like a giant tree stump, <laughs> a big one. But what I want to show you guys is how many of you guys saw the movie Moana? You know, the movie about the girl and Maui and the lava monster. That come out of the volcano that was sleeping. She was Tafiti, but then the volcano Tafiti woke up and Taka, the great Taka, emerges, the lava monster. And she starts devouring islands, island after island. And, and technically, darkness covered the whole earth when Taka was emerged. But luckily, there was Maui and his fish hook, who turns into a falcon, like Ra. 
you know, Ra, the Falcon, that's same, same symbolic thing there going on, which is him and his sun disc, <laughs> Ron, his sun disc. But what I want to get you guys looking at is this. Did you not pay attention to what happened on this scene when Maui and Moana, they went to the realm of monsters and they climbed up this volcano, literally, that looks like a giant biblical tree. They literally climbed to the top of this huge tree stump volcano. And when they get to the giant of this, giant, to the top of this volcano, these pictures are blurry. I'm sorry. I don't know why. When they get to the top of this volcano slash tree slash portal, here's Malek's mouth, the devil's mouth, Satan's mouth, the mouth of the abyss, literally. You got to understand, Leviathan is also the form of what? Well, the mouth, the, the gates, the opening to the pits of hell. <laughs> this here is Malek's, Marduk's. <laughs> Satan's, Leviathan's, this is the mouth, the entrance to the underworld. You're like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. You remember Maui said when he got there, one sacrifice has to be made to this mountain once a year to please the gods. Talking about the volcano. And she looks at him all freaked out. And well, next thing you know, the mouth opens and in jumps Maui into this literally spiral vortex portal volcano that had emptied out exactly like you see in the journey to the center of the earth or journey to the yeah, journey to the center of earth. Um, but my point is this back to the, back to the Wyoming tree stump and the portal to the underworld <laughs> and the mouth of Malek that opens to the abyss. And then the giant Titans, like that's little Maui and that's the giant reptile literal with Maui there. Okay. Going into the underworld where there's the realm of monsters. Okay. In case you haven't been on that little rabbit hole there. And that's bring that up because once again, we're talking about Abaddon and the abyss and the underworld and Leviathan and the creatures and the Titans that are kept in the underworld. This is going to get crazy. Just get ready for it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's keep on going here. Make sure I'm sharing my screen. All right. Now, let's go a little, a little further. Okay. Oh, here's something else about the locust. In a 1948 novel, the locust have no king is a social satire centered around New York's literary um, elite and their desperate, debauched um, hangers on. The title alludes to the biblical locust king Abaddon, the king of locusts. Okay. So now let's go a little further. Comic books, you see it here. This one's pretty cool. Watch this. Um, Abaddon is a snake-like monster that feeds, and snake-like monster, that's what I was talking about with the Leviathan, that feeds on stories eventually um, confronted by Gilgamesh, and thus Satan inspired the Antichrist Gilgamesh to write the Epic of Gilgamesh. The comic also links Abaddon with Leviathan. That's what this is talking about here. Like I was talking about earlier. And this one, well, you can go on and on and on with that stuff. Here's another one that's very interesting to me. This section here. Abaddon is pictured as a demon. Abaddon is the first of the infernal names. The first one. And is and it comes, that's because the first thing was darkness over the face of the deep. That was wrath over the face of the deep. And God's wrath went over when he wiped his hand over the face of the deep and separated the, the deep from the sea. The darkness from the deep. Now here we go. Abaddon is listed as the name of God used by Moses to flood Egypt. But that's the key of Solomon. If you know about the key of Solomon, you know about Freemasonry and you know about all of their little secrets. <laughs> and one of those is the fact that they have looked at the altered version of everything. They worship Satan and Lucifer rather than God, the father and his son, Yeshua. OK, now the thing is, is their God is Gadriel, Gadriel, OK, who is another word for name for Satan. Okay, which is just like Azazel and everything else that we've covered on our page a lot. It's strange. This one talks about a creature that caused a flood of Egypt when that's exactly what I was talking about here in Revelation. When the serpent literally came and spewed out his flood after the people. And then the what? <laughs> Next thing you know, 
the earth swallowed it up, which is incredible when you think the earth also spewed up water during the flood of Noah. What do you mean? Well, remember the springs of the deep? What's the deep? The darkness over the face of the deep. The springs of the underworld broke forth right there in Genesis. So, hope everybody's doing good and following along here. But let's keep on going here. What, there were, I want to make sure I haven't skipped some of the stuff I was talking about. Oh yeah, Span <laughs> Phoenix Rising. Um, I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole rabbit hole. I get off track. All right, here we go. Check this out. This is also very interesting. Here, had Abaddon was um, the original name from the for the planet uh, Coruscant in the de first draft of Return of the Jedi. Jedi in 1983, the lower levels of the planet served as the layer of the emperor um, in which Luke Skywalker would fight Darth Vader. Meaning this, they were originally going to name the underworld of this planet Abaddon, where Satan and Luke Skywalker would fight off. So now here is here is where um, this also comes in once again. The newer film coming out, also Godzilla, King of Monsters, talking about the whole um, Abaddon coming up. I encourage you guys to look into. But before I go further, let me just double check because there was a lot of stuff in this with Abaddon. But I encourage you guys to look into if you get a chance because there's way more I need to talk about. Okay, sweet. We're just going to move on past that page because here's my next thing. <laughs> 190 of you. If you don't mind, hit go and hit that like button and subscribe button and keep on following along. Let's check this out. Now, let's look at this one. The new Godzilla coming out. The new empire <laughs> is what's happening. For those of you that don't know, um, the new Godzilla movie that's coming out was scheduled after April 8th for a long time. And it wasn't until recently they put out the grand announcement they had moved it before April 8th's eclipse. So they can make sure you watch this movie before April 8th now. Interesting. Let's look at this. Abaddon, also dubbed Titanus. <laughs> Abaddon, which is crazy. If you think about the fact that they made the word the ship Titan down that went down into the abyss and disappeared like a... I'm not going to say sacra, you know, but literally they had the Titan go down into the abyss and it went astray. We'll say that. Pretty interesting. They named that Titan during these days also being sacrificed, just like the Titanic who also sunk out there by the abyss. Titanic, Titanic. <laughs> and then they got Abaddon, the abyss, the bottom of the ocean, the darkness of the deep named also Titanus, Abaddon is a giant um, kaiju created in legendary pictures that appears in Legendary's 2019 Godzilla King of Monsters. That's what I was telling you about that predicted this coming Abaddon in this new one. But check this out. Abaddon is a biblical fallen angel, sometimes the angel of death. Now we're getting somewhere. And sometimes the angel of destruction. He is notably mentioned to have had an army of locusts. Here we go again. History. At some point before 2019, Monarch established an outpost of, um, around Abaddon and Devil's Tower, Wyoming. When uh, that, that name calls all the Titans, Abaddon breaks free and begins to hunt with its new pack of locusts. <laughs> when the okra calls all Titans to Boston, Abaddon does not arrive in time for the battle and does not see Godzilla because the alpha of all Titans again, except, except Kong. So I found that pretty interesting because that's the one that's coming out now is going to be picking up where that one left off here in the new empire of Godzilla also. But my thing is this. Do we have anything that's been in plain sight about trees and portals? Well, of course. One of the movies I've been dying to decode, but I don't want to get copyright for is Stranger Things. And they're upside down. As above, so below. But I want you guys to know all the ways in which Stranger Things happens. Watch this.
some things here. It's not me. Now it's it's not muted on my end. Hmm. This is weird. Hmm. Hold on one. Check, check, check. Okay, no, that's not it. Hold on one sec. Wait, you can hear me now or no? Some people are saying no sound. Some people are saying good sound. I don't understand. Okay, I don't know. I think that YouTube is probably messing with me with what's happening here. So I'm going to keep on going. Sweet. <laughs> Let's keep on going. All right. So, all right, let's move on forward. My, thank you, everyone that has just alerted me. Let's move on forward here. Sweet, 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 good sound. There is a huge bug on my screen. All right, check this out, guys. You ready for this? Back to this. So we have the portals, okay? The ones I showed you, the tree portal. First portal that they entered into the underworld was through a tree portal. And then the next thing I wanted to show you was this place. When this opened up, this is how he Steve entered into the underworld. It pulled him in, but he came through the other, other side and turned upside down. There was no water there. Dry ground as above, so below. is in the spiritual realm side of the earth. Then the ultimate portal opened up in the end when the earth split apart. And this happened. So I wanted to point that out. But main thing is this tree portal. Like I said... The tree portal is how the first um, how the first Demogorgon got onto, which demon got onto the earth, was through a tree portal from the upside down into the other side. Okay? Like I said, from above to below. See, everything flipped. So, like I said, that led me to this and this and some curious things I've been looking at around those two things. But let's move a little further forward past this point. Because like I say, it's going to get crazy. All right. Next thing is this. All right. So we talked about this. I hope you guys heard this. I don't know what you didn't hear or not. Because some of this stuff has been pretty intense. All right. So here we go. Next thing is this word. So for those of you that's been following along with my page. Wow, I've still got that thing pulled up. Okay, for those of you that's been following along on the page, you know that um, I've been covering a lot of things with the language of the beast, which is the English language, and words like um, uh, to pray and to pray, which P R A Y and Satan P R E Y is on us, and how you see that all throughout the place. <laughs> okay, but there's also this. Y'all ever thought about the word primeval? Okay, this word here. See, this is kind of an in plain sight, too, because every time you hear about this, it refers to like the dark, dark period at the beginning of time. An area of forest that has attained great age, the oldest age, a positive and trigger satisfying certain conditions. Name given to biblical scholars. Look, this is when you think about like the old age, primeval. But see, you got to remember in the beginning, there was darkness over the face of the deep even before there was light in the world. The first thing that was in this world was darkness and water and the darkness that was over the face of the deep. Wrath, Satan, the great Leviathan, okay? Um, the deep, that's referred to as a deity throughout your Bible, especially in the New Testament. Um, primeval is also another in plain sight word because it's literally the prime evil. As in back to the way it was. See, what God has done with this whole wonderful book of the Bible is he's taken and he started it. He fulfilled it. And now it's rewinding back to the beginning. Where the last thing that's going to happen is this great battle of Gog and Magog. And then this. Job and Isaiah talk about the final battle ever of Leviathan and God when he finally kills and slays that great Leviathan of the deep, of the sea. That's when Satan is finally done away with and put in the lake of fire forever. Okay? 
So I say all that to point to my next point because I wanted to really hold off on Donald Trump as long as we could because <laughs> I wanted you to see all the points that I've already pointed out of this stuff's kind of like happening now again, all over again. Okay. Now, do you know what's coming outside of the eclipse that everybody's talking about? See, a lot of people forget the eclipse is coming, yes. And the eclipse is a very, very important eclipse because <laughs> each time we've had one of these eclipses before has been right in the middle of a great war. But this specific eclipse has not happened as far as this path for a very long time. <laughs> but see, we don't just have the eclipse going on. At the same time, we're having the 200-year locust cicadas released onto the earth. And they've publicly admitted this. Like on the news everywhere, people are excited about it. <laughs> I don't know why you're excited about those things that are going to be making so much noise above you. It's going to drive you insane. <laughs> you ever heard them? See, I'm from North Carolina. I hear cicadas. I pick the little June bugs off the trees all the time. The fake little dead bodies. Okay. I, um, well, there are going to be billions of those released onto the earth right after this eclipse. Like it's already been talking about these locust cicadas. Cicadas is also a form of death. And if you've been watching The Flash, The Flash, one of his enemies is the cicada. I can't remember his name, but he's got that whole resp respiratory system thing, everything that he fights. Um, so you got to understand, it's kind of weird. When you look at Donald Trump and the things I'm about to present to you and the fact that these locusts are going to be released on the earth, that we have this mention of a Abaddon just scattered everywhere in every single thing nowadays in films and movies and books and all kinds of stuff. We got this Abaddon Apollyon figure just everywhere. But we also have this next thing I want to show you. It's time to look into Donald Trump a little bit with you guys. I've talked about a lot of this stuff even more in depth on my Facebook page, but we're going to touch on some points. Let's start in his penthouse. Make sure I'm sharing the right way with you. Yep. Okay, good. You ready for this? Man with the Midas touch. I want to remind you, it's easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this already gets an X mark for me for the godly man of Trump. Okay, but let's keep on going here. Man with the Midas touch. Everything he touches turns to gold. Inside the president elects. $100 million Trump Tower penthouse, complete with gold-rimmed candy bowls, a Mercedes for his son, and ceiling murals of Greek gods. Donald and his husband wife, <laughs> hole of the rabbit hole, 66-floor penthouse in Trump Tower offers stunning view of Central Park. It's three. Now, I hope you already. So a lot of you guys already know this. His penthouse suite is on the 66th floor of his 666 foot tall tower, which was actually 664 feet tall until he literally added two more foot himself. Not like he didn't go up and build it, but he, he specifically asked for those extra feet of tower antenna to be added on top. Then there's this. Do you know that he actually got, I forgot which building it was beside him. I don't want to present these things without showing it in front of your face. Um, but I want to say you can look at this yourself. Trump got one of the buildings right beside him to knock off a couple of layers because it overshadowed his. Also something you can pull up yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. It's just I have a billion other things already pulled up here for you guys. But here's this, okay? It's three stories um, feature floors, walls, and columns covered in marble while gold uh, dominates the ornaments. A statue of Euros and physique, which is, um, by the way, that's Cupid and his girlfriend, by the way. And it wasn't initially going to be his girlfriend, but Cupid went to, to shoot um, physique. And when he did, he accidentally shot himself with the arrow and fell in love with her. That's his love story. Well, this is pictured inside of his penthouse suite. We're going to get to that. Along with Greek vases lining a white marble fireplace. Um, luxurious penthouse on Fifth uh, Avenue appears to take inspiration from the Palace of uh, Versailles. Trump, 69 at that time, who is going to be 77 this year. This is his holy year. Okay. 
developed the property and it was uh, completed in 1983 and now estimated a hundred million dollars. Now, here we go. Let's look at some things in here. If you know about Freemasonry, you know about the twin pillars. Well, let me tell you, this man has twin pillars here, twin pillars there, twin pillars here, twin pillars back there. I mean, you're going to see them scattered throughout this place. His obsession with pillars, mar marble, and gold and Greek gods. So let's look at this. <clears throat> this one's important. This here is, like I say, Cupid and his lover. Right here. And now, it's funny, you got his wings as Cupid. Cupid is the one with the wings. His lover is not. Okay? Cupid is the one with the wings. This is his statue here. Now, another name for this Cupid figure is, guess what? Apollyon and also Abaddon. But up here specifically in this painting that you can find on his fireplace right above is this. Not only does he have his Greek vases here, but up here he has Apollo. There's Apollyon led in his chariot by Aurora, which is once again another love story of the same love story you read about here. Now, let's look a little further. Okay? Art of the Dealmaker classical art dominates here with a bronze statue of Euros and Physique, one of the great love Greek love stories. It's important to understand why Donald Trump does this all the time. See, that's the fertility goddess worship symbol. That is what it is. I sometimes have kids watching this show. You have to understand what that is, that upside down triangle and why he holds it down there. OK, fertility worship. Um, this is also why I've been talking about lately and trying to make sure you guys know that all these towers that Donald Trump has erected everywhere, especially in the United States, not to mention all the other continents, they're connected by tunnels underground. Also, Donald Trump is... I hate saying this. I'm so scared I'm going to get shut down one day on YouTube. I believe he's behind human trafficking more than anybody in this world with his underground tunnels and from people that I've spoken with from Vegas. Okay. Who have testified to their families. And this is through a great friend of mine who I miss very much. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's crazy stuff going on in Trump Towers that a lot of people don't even pay attention to, especially in New York. Speaking of that, that's my next point. Okay. Outside of, oh, I didn't even read the most important part of that. I'm very sorry. Here's this, okay? Greek goddess of the dawn, the morning, suggesting Trump sees himself in a mold of Apollo. I want to read that again. The Greek goddess of the dawn, suggesting Trump sees himself as the mold of Apollo, which is Zeus's son a.k.a. Hercules, who was also blonde hair, blue eyes. You got to understand this also. You see the whole thing. Zeus and Hercules, you have... Um, oh, that's my next point, is Zeus. I cannot forget this. While I'm going here on Google Earth and looking at Trump Towers, I want you guys to think hard about all the father-son heroic stories that you see kind of in your face, especially Thor and Odin. Things like that, blonde hair, blue eyed father, and then both of them with their one eye symbolism too. That kind of goes throughout all of these stories. Okay. Now check this out. Let's look at Donald Trump's tower before I look into Zeus real quick here on the map. Okay. First thing I want you guys to look at is Trump Tower. Woo. Outside of his obsession with Apollyon and Abaddon, a bad Don, let's look at Trump Tower. And you know, it's going to take you to New York. So many people think that Trump Tower is only in New York. Okay. There's many Trump Towers. There's actually some in China. There's Russia. There's all over the world. There is Trump Towers. But I really want you to look here at the Trump Tower. Okay. Whoop. Come on. Just take me there. Okay. Here we are. Now. Uh, this fine. This is fine. First, okay. First of all, this is the IBM building. Image man beast. By the way, <laughs> right here beside it. That's beside it. This is known as the um, time travel. Watch this time machine. If I was to look up time machine, maybe some of you guys haven't even done this yet. Watch this time machine right now. It'll pull up this building right beside it. Did you know there's a building beside Trump Tower called Time Machine? Just in case you didn't know that. 
Now you know that. Can you believe that the picture for this is 1888, which is a portal number? His time machine building is numbered 888, which is the infinite snake eating its tail or Boris number or Boralus number of infinity. You see all the clocks, the portals, they're all different times on his <laughs> portal tower beside Trump Tower. OK, but let's look back here. Ah, Get me out of here. OK, this is Trump Tower. This is the one I want to look at over here. First, you have the seven pillars rising. X that out. 3D version here. You have, whoops, stop it. All right, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pillars rising 666 foot high, which are the seven deadly sins. But if you look down here, like perverted Donald Trump, you'll see something else. You see his upside down triangle that he's obsessed with. And not only that, they're black cubes. This whole tower's black. This upside down fertility goddess triangle here is in a certain pattern I want you to observe. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Six by six by six by six. And you know what they're doing? It's fertile. He went and planted plants in here for fertility. There's plants growing in each one of these black cubes. And it's upside down obelisk to Satan. <laughs> here. Trump Tower. Okay. And like I say, his penthouse suite is up here on the 66th floor with all his Abaddon Apollyon worshiping going on inside that we just talked about. But I want to point something else out. You know, there's the Zeus thing that I've been wanting to tell you guys about for a long time that some people on my Facebook page know about. You know, if you go up here, make sure you guys know this. You know, you you hear about you hear about this in um, like old Greek tale, okay, about Zeus and Mount Olympus. And you also know about Hercules. And you know about the Titans that came up from the bottom of the ocean when Zeus went, when Hades went out, opened up the abyss and released the Titans onto the earth. The Titans come out of the bottom of the abyss and the bottom of the ocean and don't come on to the land. And Zeus is up on Mount Olympus throwing his lightning bolts down and Hercules is right down on the earth fighting these beasts and titans that are coming up onto the land. But guess who's beside Zeus? Hela. There's Zeus and Hela who have Hercules. Hela is Zeus's wife. But a fun fact, guys, I've been trying to tell you guys, we're in the biblical land over here and everything overseas is a disguise. Watch this. For example, if you were to type in Mount Olympus, like, oh, I want to learn about Zeus today. I'm going to type in Mount Olympus. Watch where it takes you. Not where I want it to take me. Why would I want to go overseas? That's weird. I want to go to Mount Olympus, America. Hmm. Now, yeah, take me back over here. On what coast? Washington, which is a very important state. That's Remember, you go across the Oregon Trail to get into the promised land in Oregon Trail, by the way, the game. And you start in Washington. Why? Because this is an important place up here. Not just an important place. Don't you notice there was a great kingdom that once set here? Look at these underground facility that squared off around Mount Olympus. It's like a battleground out here. Weird, there's a Mount Olympus here in Washington State that a lot of people don't even know about. But can you guess it? Would you Would you have ever guessed if you would have, well, didn't you know that Zeus is married to who? Zeus is married to Hela, which is why you should look for Mount St. Hela right beside of Zeus. This is why you have, you have Mount Olympus right next to Mount St. Hella. Okay. And if you look at Mount St. Hella, Mount St. Hella is the one they're expecting to be most likely to go off, by the way, next to Yellowstone. You have Spirit Lake down here by Mount St. Hella. So you have Zeus and Hella over here in the United States in Washington State fighting what? Well, they're facing what I've been telling everybody. Out here is a great portal to the underworld, the abyss. Okay, same place that Hercules in Hercules was opened up to release the Titans onto the land. But it's crazy because if you look Devil's Tower, which is pretty crazy, look at this almost like something's buried out here. Huge. 
out here in Wyoming. And I've went all out here. I've driven and all this stuff. It's crazy out there, guys. But my thing is this. It's strange we have all this stuff out here. And let me see. I want to see what show you guys what Devil's Tower looks like one more time. Devil's Tower. All right. <laughs> Check this out. Devil's Tower. Looks like a big old tree stump. And I bring that up because of what I was talking about earlier. I just wanted you guys to kind of get a view of this place. Pretty nuts. Hmm. Well, I don't know why it wouldn't take me right to it. Anyway. So, yeah, there's a picture of it right there if you get wanting to see that. But I thought that was very interesting in line with what we were talking about earlier. But my thing was, the main thing was, was I want you guys to understand there's a Mount Olympus and Mount St. Helens that's side by side over here. And a lot of people don't even know it. Because once again, that falls right in line with this. If the titans of the abyss and everything were to come up, well, that would also be in reference to this whole thing here. Also happening in Americas. So let me X out of this and I'm going to get into some pretty crazy stuff. Or crazy us, crazy earth stuff. <laughs> done with that one. I think I'm done with Google Earth for now. And I've showed you that. Yes. So here we go. This is, I want to shout out to Peaked, whatever this page is up here. If you're the creator of this webpage, I enjoyed your content today. I want to share with you guys some things this man has discovered about Donald Trump, which I knew about a lot of this stuff. Some of the stuff is new to me. And I wanted to share it because I love the way this guy presents it. Make sure I'm still good on this end. 184 of you. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. 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 Okay. Check this out. This could blow your minds. Okay. If you know about the Tetraed, okay, in the Jewish culture, okay, and the whole synagogue of Satan, the star of Rephraim, and all of the things around that as well. Let's look at what that word and the dramatry of that is. You have T being 100, E5, T100, R80, A1, D4 coming to 290. Then you have Christ, which, by the way, in the Bible, they weren't like, oh, the Christ is coming. No, Christ in the language of the beast has been created as a distraction so that you're, not only are you saying God, Gad, you're saying Christos and Christ as the Christnos, the God of India. Okay, once again, only because of the language of the beast, this word would be Messiah, but because of the language of the beast, it identifies as 290. It's almost like they did it intentionally. Then they got messianic age. If you take messianic and age, you also get 290. Now, check this out. If you take the word sun god, you get 290. Now, hmm. Donald Trump was born and the 290th brown lunation of the moon, which is the blood moon of the golden age. Check this out. When Mr. Don, 9-11, the ultimate time traveler, I was just talking to you guys about the time travel plaza right beside his Trump Tower, and most important pharaoh since Egypt, I've been telling you guys about the vril of Trump that's been passed down since Egypt, entered this magical world. By Egypt, I mean the city of Enoch. He entered it and entered it with a bang. I have highlighted his number, manic, magic, his magic number many times before. Today, we look specifically on the day of his magical birth. This is crazy. Donald John Trump entered the prison planet reality on this crazy number here, 614 1946. So you have 614 and literally 614 here also with a nine. Here's where this comes in. 614 and 146. Oh, what a number firework. Why? All right, so here's where you get this, okay? Donald Trump entered the world on 9-11. You're like, no, he didn't watch this. <laughs> so 6 plus 4 plus 1 equals 11. 6 plus 4 plus 1 equals 11. The only odd number out is a 9. Literally, 9, 11, 11. 9-11. Check this out. Um, this person turned 18 years old that day, and one year later, a UFO crashed somewhere near Roswell. 
June 14 equals 1331 in Jewish Gematria, which, by the way, which is his birthday, June 14th. <laughs> One of the most magical numbers out there because it is 111111 and includes the high numbers 133, 331. Once again, still talking about Donald Trump's birthday. But more fascinatingly, I don't even know if that's a word, pal. 614 is the value of, guess what? Donald Trump's birthday, 614, has the value of Revelation 9-11. As in the whole thing added up equals 614. Check this out. Okay. You have 10, 22, 13, 23, 24, 19, 30. All these numbers added together, each one split, equaling 614. Literally, the book of Revelation, chapter 9, 11, which talks about Abaddon, and we know about America's significance with 9, 11, and the fact that Donald Trump literally predicted 9, 11 a few months before 9, 11 took place. His name, his birth date is all around this already. But more fascinating, 614 is the value of 911, the golden ratio cut of the book of Revelation, which means Abaddon, a.k.a. Apollyon, king of the bottomless pit for the first time. How convenient as the dawn connects to 911 with every inch of his existence. Now, check this out. We're just getting started. This dude's cracked a lot of mess wide open. The other way around, 146 gives us so Many support important connections with Gematria. Apollyon himself in Greek um, is this, 1460, which, like I say, is tying in with Donald Trump's birthday. And that's Apollyon. <laughs> and even more biblical, snake and apple. Did you know that uh, Apple's Steve Jobs died exactly 266 weeks before Trump's election day? 266 is the sin number from the Bible and was posi was the position of the Golden Gate during his birth. Uh, from Trump's birth to Steve Jobs' first Wikipedia entry um, are 662 months and six days. 662 is 266 reversed a technique that Da Vinci used and Aleister Crowley revered in magic practices. Also, Trump was 23,855 days old when, jo when Jobs died, 45 days before he turned 23,900 days. Both 239 and 45 are numbers of the Golden Gate in Dramatria. And Steve Jobs, that, that's just the whole thing. Let's keep on going here. It's talking about snake and apple. Let's just look at these so we can keep on for time's sake. Snake equals 146, and Apple equals 146, which is incredible. Because like I say, we're still tied around Donald Trump's 6, 14, 9, uh, 1946, his numbers. But let's look a little bit further. Bart Simpson, the guy who predicts the future, <laughs> well, his name equals 146. Lisa Simpson also, and Vlad the Impeller, who I believe was also an Antichrist, and the Prince of Vales. Of Wales, 146. Enlightenment, the Freemason word enlightenment literally adds up to be 146. The word apocalypse adds up to be 146. Economist, 146. Leonardo da Vinci himself <laughs> equals 146. Bread and circus and Game of Thrones, of course, equals 146. Well, I thought this was pretty interesting, especially when you look at this. Now, Back to the future, um, 290 days also during that whole period. This just goes on and on and on. I mean, it's crazy to me, a lot of this stuff. You have Trump here being the 88, um, Donald J. Trump equaling 888, both of these portal numbers. That's his name. But with all, let's not get started on the fact that Don literally means Lord, and in English, the language of the beast means Bell. And then you have Trump, who ran with Pence. Trump Pence, who ran for, now has two political party campaigns. <laughs> ran. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I wanted to share that with you, because there's all kinds of, of stuff like that that you guys can kind of dig into and look around on. But, my point is this, okay? I just want to recap a little bit. Here's what some things we've talked about. 
Okay. The main thing we did was started off the video with scripture. And I proved to you guys why we should be looking for a second big event of all the things happening again on a shorter season. And that was proven by talking about John and his little book about his seven thunders that he didn't get to tell us about that he had to swallow to um, talk about it at a later time to prophesy at a later time, which is us in the shortened season and the shortened time for the sake of the leg. Now, here's where I'm getting at. We have two things happening back to back with this darkness of the eclipse and also the releasing of locusts onto the land. And at the same time, the Abaddon scripture, all three of those things happening right now also. And it's weird. Those are the last few things that have to really take place before the great and final battle of Leviathan, which is nuts. Um, I think that truly, if you look at the plagues of Egypt, we're going to see all that on a micro scale being poured out on the land again, a uh, shortened version, just like the seven bowls of wrath were technically the plagues mixed all in that as well. <laughs> a lot of people don't look at it that way. Um, just like Gog has seen it, us over here in MAGA, Magog, see the synagogue of Satan is overseas where they claim to be Jews, but are not because they're in a land that is not. We are MAGA. Magog, make America great again, make Babylon great again. We are the land of old of the Bible Bible over here, America. And we're going to be getting the worst of it, I believe, here shortly. Um, so with that said, this is one of my shorter videos. Not really. I think hour 47 is my normal. Um, I am going to pause here, okay? Um, just because I've covered a whole lot on this. But I do want to say this. If like you're just getting up here right now, I want you to start over and watch some of the stuff at the beginning, the biblical stuff where I point out all these things must take place and fall into place as well. Okay. Also, I want to say this. I encourage you guys to jump over and to follow my Facebook page. I'll show you where it is and what to look for. Um, please. Um, hold on one sec. Let's see if I can. Boop. All right. So for those of you that don't know, I do have a Facebook channel as well that I encourage all you guys over here on YouTube to jump over and follow. I have reached 2.4 million people just in the last day and a half over on that page. But there's so much stuff that's going on on that page that you guys need to catch up on. So I'm going to ask if 200 of you guys want to jump on over here and check out Beyond the Veil. This is my profile you'd be looking for. And if you can't, I don't even. Yeah, this is my profile that you. Whoops. That's my profile that you would be looking for. And if you can't find this profile because of my restrictions and things like that, I encourage you to maybe go over to my personal page, which is Dustin R. Bar, and find me here, where I also share a lot of crazy things. Um, but a few updates from this page. I did want to show you this. I was so excited. This was just March 15th, March 16th. Just since yesterday afternoon to today, we have reached over 2.4 million people with truth, which has been pretty incredible. Uh, but yeah, go on and check out this. Be, we kind of catched up on stuff on that. And I want to say this as well. Um, my wife and me, we have a daughter that is going to be born. Our due date is April 7th, which is the day before the eclipse. Um, I'm pretty, pretty excited. <laughs> I think is I I can say so many words for the joy that I'm, I'm I have for bringing my daughter into the world. The fact that this day before eclipse, it is what it is. Um, I do want to say this though. I'm going to try and do a meet and greet with a few of you guys and try and get some of these baptisms that have kind of backed up for a little bit checked off. Um, my wife and me have been going through this whole thing here of, of trying to get situated and figure out what we're going to do next, what's next for us, and um, in the meantime, the 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 um. My inbox is just overflowing. People are constantly wanting to get baptisms, learn things and grow. And so I'm going to try and set up a meet and greet of where I meet at one location. And those willing or wanting to give their life to Christ and, and share a testimony or wanting to take part in baptizing and being baptized, whichever, and helping out food and refreshments. I don't care whatever you want to do. Uh, let me know that. And we're going to try and set something up where we can get this kind of going and once I have my daughter in the world and this eclipse happens and whatever takes place, I'm going to try my best, whoever's around me, to reach out to you as well um, for baptisms and things um, as well. I want to say this is also in closing. Uh, this is what I do with my life. Um, this is all I do now is ministry through YouTube and Facebook. Um, every day I'm stuck with my nose in a computer screen or a phone screen trying to either respond back to questions, statements, an answers, see things, respond back to things that people are asking and show you guys and present things all at once. 
So I want to say this. If you guys do want to take part in this ministry by helping me out whatsoever, I did share my cash app and my PayPal down in the description below. I'm still fairly new with only two point some thousand followers on um, YouTube. So I'm not even making anything to be like joyful about. But I do know this. Um, we have a daughter coming into the world and um, this stuff isn't free. However, I'm going to do it regardless. But if you would like to help out with that, that's in the bottom. Scott, that stuff will get you. See, saying things like this gets you kicked out of a page, just so you guys know that. I would never come in on any guys' one of you guys' pages and say this in the middle of your live screen. This is not a cult. Um, however, if you would like to join a cult, you can go exit this channel and go find one somewhere else. But anyway, I'm going to um, close this thing out here with a prayer and send you guys forward with whatever you have going on in your weeks. Um, I do want to say that I'm going to try and come back here in the next like two or three days and um, present a few other things that I want to discuss with you guys that are pretty nuts. Um, but in the meantime, be sure to check out my Facebook page and everything else here. Um, but time for me to close. Please join me in prayer wherever you are. Father, I thank you so much for uh, this opportunity I've had to, to speak. Um, Father, I pray that there were some ears listening. I pray there were some eyes willing to see. I pray there was some patience in some people. Um, Father, I know that there's always some that are in a disagreement stage or wanting to push away truth, Father, with an unwillingness to learn or, or grow. But Father, I pray that you may soften their hearts today so they may truly see these things before time runs out and you shut the door. Father, I pray that um, as we know, in the days of Noah, there was a point where you closed and you sealed your door, Father. And we know that now we have a prophecy looking for where you're going to go out and and those with your mark, Father, you're going to protect. And those without your mark, Father, you're going to you're going to let go through some things. Father, I pray that your mark is made clear today and, and the people that truly fought, follow and love you and, and represent and honor your son. And Father, I pray that those who are taking part in the mark of Rome and the mark of the beast, the system that's going on in this world today, Father, I pray that that mark. Father, I pray that they may turn and repent and, and turn back to you, Father, and put down their ways. Um, and focus on the ministry that you've given them to be part of the church, to be the church daily, Father, and not fall in the ways of Rome. Father, I pray this, ch this channel may be a blessing to many. I pray that the words I speak will not direct anything toward me and, and only will point toward people towards you and your son and what he did for us. I pray that um, our lives may be a representation of what he's done in our lives and what he's doing through our lives to others. I pray that we may represent all the fruits, Father, that you pr provide in our lives so that we can produce fruit for the kingdom as well. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for your son who makes these things possible and makes it possible for me to approach your throne. It's through him and, and his name, Yeshua, we pray and ask all these things. Amen. All right. So I'm going to jump off here. I'm asking if 190 of you guys can go on and hit that uh, like button or the thumbs down button. Probably that guy who thinks I'm part of a cult, he'll probably hit the thumbs down button. But if you guys want to hit one of those buttons with a subscribe button, that'd be great just to get the algorithm jumping again um, so that we can have some more views moving forward. Love you guys so much. I uh, wish I would have had more time down here in the chat box tonight, but it is just a rolling. Um, however, I encourage you guys to keep digging for truth. Keep searching for just searching for Christ. OK, and by that, I'm saying his fruits. Whether you're searching for his fruits in your life and saying, okay, Father, look, these these fruits over here, they're not fruits of him. These are fruits of the enemy, and I want to get rid of them, and I want to start recognizing these fruits of your son in my life, these things that he taught us. Well, start looking for those things. Start tweaking things. Start changing things. Start repenting, and let it start within you, and let it spill out in others as well. Share your testimonies with others, how you were one way and how you became another. Let everything in between be all him. Love you guys so much. Appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you on the next one. Good night from beyond the veil.